Welcome, everybody. I am Paula Ludwig with the Atlantic Institute. Uh, we're going to do a cultural creations class today, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Atlantic Institute first. We are a nonprofit organization who promotes positive dialogue between different faiths, cultures, religion, getting to know your next door neighbor, just having positive conversations. Um, with that being said, I am going to show you a two minute video about the Atlantic Institute and it'll explain it just a little bit better than I can. Oops. Sorry, I'm always bad at this. <laughs> the Atlantic Institute is a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting harmonious coexistence between peoples of various cultures, faiths, and backgrounds. We seek this goal through peaceful dialogue, education initiatives, and community organization. Our dialogue events bring together experts, community and faith leaders, and knowledge seekers to address social issues that affect us all. We feel dialogue is the most important element in peaceful coexistence, so we try and maintain several panel discussions, TED Talk events, and book clubs throughout the year. These events touch on social issues, race relations, and cultural understanding and are a mainstay of our programming. The Atlantic Institute's education events are extremely important to our mission of understanding. We want to promote socially forward critical thinking to students of all ages. To that end, we have developed programs that seek to grow the creative spirit of students and help them think about their communities and the world around them. Our Future Leaders of Dialogue event brings together nominated elite students to learn from each other as well as political and business leaders. Our art and essay contest gives students a theme about important societal issues and allows them to create wonderful works of art and writing while steering their minds towards improving their world. We are always seeking ways to educate youths and adults in order to make a peaceful world for all of us. Our community events are designed to transform neighbors into friends and groups of people into a community. By associating with other nonprofits or by our own initiative, we are always trying to discover new avenues to improve our neighborhoods, places of worship, and community centers. We host cooking demonstrations of food from other cultures, work with various nonprofits to help elevate the work of others, and try to find a way to make the lives of those who are disenfranchised or marginalized better. Building a more peaceful world starts in our backyards, so we are dedicated to improving our communities and associations. The Atlantic Institute is always seeking like-minded volunteers and collaborators. If you would like to learn more, find volunteer opportunities, or just want to chat with our staff, please visit our website at www.AtlanticInstituteSC.org or follow us on Facebook. We will never run out of fun, educational, peaceful events, so come join us to help make this world a better place full of understanding and unity. All right. We still have people coming in. Awesome. With that being said, though, I am going to turn this over to one of our board members who is a great supporter of us. Um, she is awesome and has other videos out there. We are recording this and we put it on our Atlantic Institute SC YouTube channels. And you can see some of her other videos. She's done cooking ones and she's done finger knitting and um, she's awesome. So I am now going to turn this over to Lorana. And thank you. Good to see everybody. I saw people coming in from all over the place. I think I saw UK and Canada and both sides of the country. So it's great to be here today. Um, Today's project is if you are a crafter, um, if you are a person with small people in your house, if you um, are one of those people that like self-care I said to my daughter as I was setting up this is like a self-care activity that catches several of the um, areas um, that you could do it's kind of like coloring and kind of like painting and kind of like being creative and we're going to do all of that together I'm going to start with showing you the different supplies these this is one of those dollar tree if you're not in the country I don't know what the equivalent would be in like the UK or in Canada but your junk store really great stuff for like a dollar and i'm gonna start with um and i've got a couple of colors on there but it was a little plastic palette 
like for watercolors or, or paint, this was at the Dollar Tree. I think everything's like a dollar twenty-five. But if you have like an ice cube tray around your house, that would work perfectly. And I shouldn't tilt it because my colors are now running. Um, but that was a dollar. Um, I got a pack of. This is. Um, I decided to go with glitter paint, um, partially because there were six different colors in the pack, and I didn't have to buy paints one by one. And this whole pack was a dollar twenty-five, and so. Little jars, but I've got six different colors, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. I got some school, some school glue. You can do the white, you can do the clear, whatever you have available. I got a pack of just um, little brushes. Uh, the one that I'll be using will probably be this one, but I might use some of the small ones today. There was one, two, three, four, five of them in this pack, and that was a dollar. And then... I got a couple of different um, kinds of um, frames today. This was just a simple acrylic frame. I don't know if you can see that. It's the kind that kind of has a little flap and you just slide your picture in and it just sits up. So I got that one, but then I also found a little, this is a little bit interesting one. And I just thought it was kind of neat and wasn't really sure what it was, but it looked kind of like a gift box and I've deconstructed it, but it had a glass, an actual glass pane and I'm giving away some of the project, but a little square glass. And it even had this little acrylic butterfly thing that was on the glass. And then it's in the box so that it looks like kind of a shadow box. And I just took it and the back side of it, the box part, I could just, pull it and it came loose and I think I'll be able to put it back in place and be able to either use it with or without the backing once I get done with the frame. So I got two frames. Let's see, what else do I have today? I got a pair of scissors. Um, I have a Sharpie and I just had a red one around, but a black or any color that you might have of Sharpie. And then I don't have the whole pack because I left it inside, but I also got a pack of tissue paper from the Dollar Tree, and they had several different packs with different kinds of colors. Oh, no, here's the rest of the pack. So this pack had some just pretty colors and pretty patterns, and they're sheets that are, there's eight sheets, and they're 22 square feet, so 20 inch by 20 inch sheets. And I just cut a piece off that I'm going to use on one of the frames today as I show you. And then the other thing that I did was I just went on the internet and I told it today a mandala because I was thinking about mandalas and asked for free coloring pages. And this was one that I found. And my picture frame said that it was eight by eight. So I just copied that image and I just dropped it into Google drawing on my computer and just sized it so that it was a little bit smaller than eight by eight and just printed that out. I used the same image and I didn't measure it, but I guessed that this frame was about six inches. And so I did one there. So I'll be able to show you some of the steps in the process at different, um, different stages in the process. So uh, let's see. The other thing that I got, they had some of these just recyclables, garbage, garbage, garbage. And I took and I just flattened the end because I'm going to use those as stirs. And I have one for each color so that I have stirs for my paint. All right. Any questions about our ingredients today? Any questions? You could use acrylic paints. You could use really any kind of paint. You want it to be something with a little bit of texture, but and then the kinds of brushes don't really matter. You could use Q-tips if that's what you had around the house. All right. Everybody good with the ingredients for this project and this adventure today? Right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up. And I'm going to, I'm not the best with setting up like my camera angles. So I'm going to now move this so that hopefully you can see me and... I can then direct you to what's happening on my table. So sometimes you might see me. I'll hold things up 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start opening up my containers. And I had mixed a few colors earlier. And I just put some plastic wrap on it because I didn't want it to dry out. So I'm just going to open that up. And because I held it sideways, some of my color ran into one of the other color wells. So I'm just going to kind of wipe that out. Oh, yeah, the other thing was some maybe napkins or paper towels. That might be good because we are going to be dealing with a little bit of paint. So I've got that opened up. So what I'm going to do is I'm opening up these colors. I've already got the green, the yellow, and the purple in. So I'm going to open up. Let's see. I've already got the green. I'm going to open up the red, the fuchsia, and this bright blue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just... This is almost like a gel kind of paint with the glitter in it. Looks like jello. And that's it. That's probably one fourth of a teaspoon. And I'm just gonna put that in the in the little color well. I'm gonna do that with each of the colors. I'm just gonna put a little bit of each color in each of the wells. And this color is what's gonna tint our glue. So next, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to turn this down so that you can see what I'm actually doing, because like I would want to actually be watching what's happening. All right. Can somebody give me a verbal? Can you guys see the palette? Yes. Okay, perfect, perfect. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my glue. This is real sophisticated crafting. And I just about fill each of the wells up. And I'm sure this is all of like one tablespoon, the depth of this well. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stir. And what will happen is that glue almost acts like a thinner or the paint almost acts like a tint, which is pretty, pretty cool. What started out as a little bit of paint now is a whole lot of paint. So I'm just going to incorporate that and make sure that that's really incorporated pretty well. And then I'm going to sit these on my um, paper towel so that I can use them. And they're just, just keeping the colors kind of separate. And you could do this with your paintbrush. You could do it with the end of a paintbrush. You could do this with a tooth um, toothpick. You could do this with a Q-tip. So if you were doing with this, this with kids, like this is the time I thought about this when I got on the calendar this year, like this is close to the lead up to holidays. And this is a really cool gifting idea. Um, you know, homemade gifts are just pretty special because you put something in them that's personal. And this is one of those kind of crafts that for all ages, this would be preschool through 99 or above. All right, so I've mixed those up. Oh, instead of it being fuchsia, that turned into a pretty cool pink. So, and you could mix colors if you wanted to and get different shades and different gradients. And you can be as creative as you really <laughs> have the capacity to be with this. And acrylic paints are oftentimes really inexpensive. Maybe like a dollar a, a, a color. All right, so we've got uh, an array of um, colors here. All right, so that's kind of getting us prepared. Now, there's a couple of things I thought <laughs> I might have missed it, and so you might too. Like in really small letters on the bottom of the paper that goes in the frame, it says remove plastic film. I didn't realize there was a plastic film on this. So check your frames, especially if they're plastic. And I'm just taking that off. I'm going to save that plastic in case I need to put something there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide that out and just put that over there. And I have my handy dandy pattern. Now, this could be any kind of pattern that you like. I went with the larger spaces because then I didn't have to be as particular with my um, brush. And that works for me. I am... One of those kids that never could figure out how to color in the lines. So um, it's not a skill that I've picked up in adulthood. So I went with the big spaces. I'm going with what will give me the best chance for success. 
and I did not cut it. So now I'm feeding it through the back. I'm just gonna open it up. So I've got that right there behind me. Now, this is a faux stained glass kind of project. And what I did next was I started with my Sharpie. Now, if you wanted this to look like stained glass, you might wanna use black for your lines. But what I did was I just began to trace those lines with my Sharpie. Now, one of the alternative ways that you could do this is you could get black paint and add your glue to it and use that to outline this area. You could use any other color, but if you were trying to look like a stained glass window, black might be a really good color to define the lines. And so this is a circle upon circle upon circle upon circle. I just went around and began tracing those. So far, is everybody with me on skill level? Everybody has could, thinks that they would have a great chance of success this far into the project? I hope so. And so what I did was I traced each one of these onto my frame. And as you can see, this is just circle upon circle upon circle. And with the magic of technology, not really, I just started in advance. I have one, da 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 da, that I've already done that. And what I did was I just cut it out. Again, I sized that image right on my computer and printed out a sheet that would be just this size. And then, as I close up the Sharpie, I just placed it on the back of my glass and just added a couple of strips of tape to it. And I outlined it. Everybody with me so far? Any questions so far? And Paula, if a question comes up and I don't see it, just unmute and chime in. All right, so, so far, we'll have the outline on there. Now, you could take this off the back. That was the whole purpose of it, but I just left it on because it gives me some contrast to begin seeing. And this is where I then go to my brush and my colors. What I decided- well, I know, They wanna know what kind of paint you're using. So this was is Dollar Tree glitter paint. It's uh, kind of a gel-ish with a whole bunch of glitter in it kind of paint. It's kind of gloop, gloppy, like um, the gel kind of food coloring would be. It's about that kind of consistency. The kinds of things you could use that are right around your house, though, would be food coloring, the drop kind or the gel kind, because you'd be tinting your, your glue. I would make your color bright and vibrant because you're wanting the color to be left, and you'll see why in just a minute. So you want it to be vibrant colors. If you can see, let's see if I can show you my palette without. They're pretty vibrant. I could go a little bit darker, but I'll show you what I did to get a nice dark color. Um, you could use the acrylic paints that come at the craft store, Walmart, um, Dollar Tree, um, other craft stores, if you've got Joann's or whatever the craft stores are, but places like Walmart and Target in their craft section would also have acrylic paints. Um, you could use what you have. I do projects and I like using random stuff. I go get oops paint from the paint store or other things like that. But things like food coloring might be something you have. They're those things you always have and they'll last like your entire lifetime couple of drops, like literally one or two drops or the gel kind would go into there. And that's where you'd be starting with. So glue, but this could also be if you had Mod Podge. If you're a crafter, Mod Podge would be something you'd already have. And it could be the clear kind. It could be the white kind. Doesn't really matter. Most of them dry clear or opaque and they'll work for this project. So this is one of those projects that you don't have to have a whole lot of special things. You need a frame of some kind, but as you can see, this one's plastic, this one's glass, 
old, these are old picture frames that you have the glass part portion of that's in the center of that. Um, and sometimes those are things that you've got in your garage and taking and reusing. I love reusing. I love using garbage to make something that's beautiful and giftable. And these are ways that you can really just use your creativity. So it's kind of like the gift that gives to you as well. Um, and there's been a whole lot of talk about all the self-care things, things that just give you the opportunity to be creative. It's like being little kids again. We're playing with our paint and, you know, the color by number thing and the coloring pages and you're deciding where to put the colors and what kind of shape you want to start with or a picture you want to start with, how elaborate or not. And I'll show you some other things that we'll do when we get to the tissue paper that can give you some additional ways to be able to take this craft to wherever you want to take it to. So our markers or our paint, or they also have pins now that have paint in them that'll leave a line. It's nice. You can add a little bit of paint to it. If you have the little kid uh, glue bottles, add a little bit of black paint and literally take your glue and outline the lines. That'll give you a much more stained glass effect. I didn't do that right now. I'm in grandma mode visiting my grandson who's just emerging into the two zone. Grandma didn't do all that today. So I'm using Sharpies because this is real life. <laughs> but those are some options that would let you take this and really create something beautiful for yourself or for someone that you love. Because these are the kind of things that you put love into. You give them to the people, you know, you know. All right. All right. So we've outlined our picture. We've gotten our coloring page. We've picked out the frame that we want. We got an idea. We've taped it to or slid that in, and then we've outlined it. And this is where the creativity comes in because I take my handy dandy brush. And what I did was I glooped it up kind of thick right on the end, just straight up and down, but I wasn't being sparing with it. And then because I wanted to use a big brush and not paint all the itty bitty ones, I decided to take those triangle like sections. And so there's three outer edges and that middle triangular ish. And what I did is I kind of glooped it on, not so that it runs, but so that it leaves a nice kind of coating of color. Let's see. This is the one I just did. Can you guys see that new kind of teal blue? Am I tilting it where you guys can see it? This one right there. Yep. Everybody can see that? Thumbs up from everybody. And then let's say, I mean, I don't want to put it right next to it because I'm being creative. So I'm going to go here on the other side, kind of diagonal. And I'm going to do the gloop gloop. And I don't want it so much that it runs because I can always put another layer on if I want to darken it. And then I just covered that space. Can you see that? And then I think I want to change colors. So I'm just going to wipe that particular color off. And let's see, I'm going to go to the red that ended up being kind of a strawberry color. And I'm going to do this one. And I'm going to do one over here, like a little more paint. And let's see, one more down here. How you guys like my coloring, my painting? You see those? Uh, I think I want to do one more. I'm going to come over here on the side. It's one that I've got another color already on, so I've only got a portion of that to color in. All right. Got that on there. And let's change up. I want to know if is it necessary to mix the paint with the glue? Yes. Now, this gel paint, I tried it without, and it was a little more clumpy than I wanted. Like I couldn't smooth the color out. And so the glue actually helped me. And I'll show you 
I'll take this green, for instance. Let's see if you can see it. It's, it's like a gel. It's like jelly. It did, but see how it gets clumpy? Can you see that? It's got peaks in it like frosting or something. And that just didn't sit well with me. But if I was using a Q-tip, that might work a little bit easier. Like I could spread that out a little bit easier. But because I was using a brush today, I tried that with the purple and I was like, ooh, it's gloppy, it's, it's gloopy. Um, the other part of what you're wanting to do is you take that little bit of paint and what the um, glue does is it makes it more opaque. That's the real benefit of the glue. It gives you that opaque. When it dries, it's going to dry to an opaque and what's left will be just the hint of that color. It's kind of like the difference between painting something and tinting it. Tinting lets your wood grain come through. It gives you a little bit of color, but it doesn't like block it completely, whereas paint covers up like the wood grain if you were working with wood or something. This is kind of that same thing. You're wanting light to be able to shine through because that's going to give it kind of the sun catcher effect, depending on where you were going to put this frame up at, hopefully near a window or something like that. The question so, is, do you keep your painting right in the frame? I'm not right in the frame. So I am trying to color in the lines, but remember, I told you guys that's not my strong skill. So that's why I have chosen to take, if you can see this in each of the kind of circle areas, there's one, two, three, and that middle triangle. So what I did first was fill in some of those groupings. Then as you go in, there's only like one, two, three parts of that that I'd be able to put another color in or leave it blank. So it really is up to you. For those that want to get real detailed, you could take a small brush and do each one of those sections that you've outlined. Um, if, you, um, if you do the piping, use the glue with some black in it and do it as piping, it almost gives you like a little ridge. So you have a little more freedom to kind of gloop it in there and, and let it settle in between. If you use glue to do your lines, I would let that dry. Let that glue dry so that you don't then merge into it with the other glue. So you might want to do that an hour, a couple hours in advance to prep it. Or if this was a project you were doing with your kids, you might do that the night before. And then on the day, those lines will be nice and dry and give them nice borders to help make it look a little bit cleaner and neater in those edges. The other thing is when you line it, you can use like a straight edge. I would not suggest doing that with children. You do that part, do the grown-up part, but you can use a straight edge to clean up that glue if it overruns your line or if it gets, you know, out of control with where you want it to be. Okay. Any other questions? Um, how much glue do you put in the paint? Ish, ish. I put um ish. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I put a little bit of paint and then I put, you know, a little bit of glue and I mix it and see if it's a color I like. So um, you want it to be able to hold on to your brush. You don't want it to be drippy, but this is kind of one of those no measurement projects. Would you say <laughs> half and half or? So in this case with this gel, I literally just put the tip of this little stir stick about the size of a coffee stir. Just mm -hmm. to, I glooped out just a little bit of that and put that with about a tablespoon of glue Okay. These little recesses are probably all of a tablespoon capacity. They're like a little kid's painter tray. Um, and then the next question is what kind of paper? Oh, it's just copy paper. I just printed this out and I just taped it to the back. Okay. I just used it as my lines. You're going to take it off when you're done. Yeah, we're going to take it off. I'm going to show you that. Yeah. So just copy paper off your printer. It could be, you know the backside of something else that you've got, because we're going to take this off. We just needed the lines. Any coloring book page, if your kid's got coloring books, just rip a page out of the coloring book and tape it to the back of it. So it's just whatever image. If you have creativity of your own where you can create your own image, you can draw your own image. You know, draw it on there and then go over it with your lines or, or whatever. Um, 
I, I'm using my resources. Uh huh. Uh huh. Any other questions? Questions. That's it right now. <laughs> All right. All right. So the idea is you pick your object, whatever your masterpiece is going to be. I've been working on some stuff with geodesic domes. So geodesic shapes is kind of like where my mind has been. And so I was like, oh, what would have big spaces, <laughs> big spaces and not be super detail oriented because I know me and I'm working within my skill set. And so this is what came up in my search that kind of just caught my attention. All right. So you guys got the idea of that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to color in some, oh, wait. This is what happens when the creativity hits. There's a spot that just needs a little color. So I'm going to add one more dollop of color in this spot. All right. To make it look a little bit balanced. All right. So once you get that done, you're going to let that dry. You're going to let that dry. You're going to let that dry. For the sake of the class, I'm not going to let it dry. And what you'll do is I'm going to add some embellishment. Now, if you noticed on this one, I printed, I cut out my mandala in the middle, but I got my frame goes, and it's hard to see because it's glass, but my frame goes all the way to the edges. So this is to show you some of the other techniques that, can, that you can incorporate with this. Now, what I'm going to do is get another brush out. I'm going to get a clean brush out and bring my glue back out. Tissue paper, another one of those things. You get it, and then you have like 14 sheets left because you buy the whole pack because you've got that one gift bag. And so what I'm going to do is this has got these pretty orange, yellow, and green rainbows. So I'm going to cut out some of these embellishments. And this also could be done in some of these sections if you wanted to. You could use... The tissue paper for all of your sections or for some of them and it'll give it a different kind of opaqueness because of the paper so what i've done is i'm just cutting out some of these shapes or you could use random you know cutouts or sizes and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my glue i'm going to put a little bit there and I'm just going to take, and I'm just going to start by just brushing a spot, just putting a little bit of glue down there. Because this paper's thin and I'm on the patio outside, I don't want it to blow away. But you take a little bit of that, that holds it down. And then I'm just taking a little bit of glue and I'm literally painting over the top. I'm saturating it. It's this thin paper. You can do this with napkins, napkins that have a pretty design on them. Um, you could do this with tissue paper. You could do this with coffee filters that you've dyed. Um, you could do them with any kind of thin paper. And what happens is that saturation lets me just kind of put a nice crease on that corner. Okay. And then, because I got some other really cool shapes here. I'm going to take and do, let's see, I'm going to do a circle. I'm going to just add, okay, I got that, and it's still wet. It's going to be kind of a mosaic. And so there's enough glue on there initially that I can just tap it. And let's see, I'm going to do an orange circle. And you can cut these out nice and neat if you want to. I am going to do these with just kind of a paper tear. All right, so I got an orange one. Let's see. I think I'm going to layer it like that. And then I'm going to go back in with my glue. Uh-oh. Be careful not to move it and to touch my wet paint. This is why it's good sometimes to let 
the sections dry because I didn't, and now I smushed paint. You guys see it's kind of making a mosaic where it overlaps. And let's see. I think I'm going to do one more little happy rainbow with the moon over it. Let's see. Just pulling this out, and then as my creativity's flowing. Let's see where I'm going to put that. I think, should we put it down here, guys? I'm hearing a resounding yes. Let's put it there, Lorana. And then I take my rainbow there. I put a little bit of glue to tack it down, and now I'm going to saturate it. Saturated. Is there any reason why I can take like the piece of tissue paper and put it on the back so that it's behind your design? No reason. You just want to make sure it's dry because you'd have okay. to turn that over. Yep. So no reason whatsoever. And then you could just put the tissue paper behind if you wanted to give it a like a background. Like color. a background. Oh, that's yep. Yep. All right. So that's what I thought you were gonna do with it at first. Because <laughs> it almost looked like the same size as that as that yeah. that glass, but yeah. um ooh, yeah. So then and this is a little bit dry wet still, the edges. Let's see. Got a little bit of runniness just because it wasn't fully dry. Let's try that because I got some. Okay, so that's where we're at so far. I'm gonna move my paint, and let's. This is this is a creative process. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'll let you guys help me pick this out. Let's see which way we should go. Should we go orange? Let's go orange. That looks bright and cheery. So we're going into fall. Can't get enough of the bright cheeriness. So I'm going to take a piece of the tissue they, paper. They want to know if mod could they use mod mod podge instead. Absolutely, of absolutely. If you've ever used mod podge, that's exactly the effect that we've got going on. Okay, so. Ooh. If I were if I were being really particular, I would almost do it and then cut out the middle portion of it. What about the green? I feel like almost the green would be a better color behind all of that. All right, we're gonna check it out. Let's see. All right, group. And make, I think it would make the other colors pop more. This is a this is a group art project. <laughs> you have now. <laughs> been pulled in as a co-instigator of this art project. <laughs> Sorry, didn't tell you in advance. You are now a co-conspirator in this art project. Sorry, uh, I, I, I love crappy right. stuff. And... Okay, so there we go. Let's see. Is that blue or green? It's a greenish kind of, kind of, kind of greenish teal. Oh, yes. I like that one better. What does everybody else think? All right. <laughs> You got two voting opportunities. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. What you think? I think it makes all the other colors pop more. Blue. Okay, we're, we're, we got one. To... We got one blue. <laughs> we got two other hands. thumbs up. All right, we're taking the two. Blue. Uh huh. This is kind of blue. Uh huh. Blue. We're counting your vote for this one. <laughs> That's how we're rolling today. All right, so then I'm going to take that and just the same as we did, you want to tack it down. So I'm going to. Like give a little dollop there. And then like literally, I'm going to position my paper on my frame. And then what I'll do is just give it a little more because I'm going to be efficient. And you see, this would be a great kids activity. This is stuff kids like to do and grownups too, if they really are being honest. Oh yeah. This is one of those, you can't go wrong. There like literally is no wrong. Go till you, <laughs> till you feel like you're done. 
You know, like how how much should I put on there? How much color till you feel done, dog? Yeah. So I'm a, a chaos kind of person. So I yeah. personally probably would have put the rainbows behind your design to get that it like cool. a, a chaos design to it. Yeah. But, yeah. But I do like the blue too. The the calmer side of myself likes the blue, blue green, versus the. So then, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Okay, I should. This is where you should probably use your scissors and give stuff time to dry. Okay, give stuff time to dry. Yeah, probably trim it up after you've. It'll dry, and this glue will cause it to dry nice and firm. Okay. Yep. All right. So then, what we're gonna do is all these colors dry. None of them are solid. And then this is where you go back to your cool frame. Now, if you were dealing with a traditional frame, you'd want to leave the back off. Mm -hmm. And you're going to take that. You guys are using your imagination, right? You're pretending like this is all dry, nice and neatly trimmed. This is to inspire you. Yes. Wait till it dries to put it in the frame. And so once all of your pieces are dry and you won't get as much light effect as with the paper, but what you end up with, and let me show you what that would be also like on the clear one, is that what you're left with is the color and your lines. And without the backing, what you end up with is... Can you guys see that? Yeah, that's awesome. And if it, if, it, if it were, I know it's not sunny where you're at right now, but if it was sunny and the light was coming through that, because yeah. you would hang this in a window, right? And then let me show you just because we can do the magic of it. <laughs> Paper gives you a different kind of op opaqueness. Yep. But if I put this behind it, are you guys able to see? Yeah. And so part of this is about your colors, the vibrancy, the glue helps it to give it that opaqueness that light will go through, yep. but that it leaves the hint of color like stained glass. If you kind of see that. Yep. Now this one I thought was a pretty interesting frame because what it had in it was it had this. Butterfly. It's a piece of acrylic. And what I thought about doing, and that's why I picked this one as my second frame, was I wondered, this is where sometimes you're just following a creative path. <laughs> and it says in the back of this, follow your dreams. I wonder if that will show that butterfly. Eh, it didn't do as good. I should have put the butterfly on it and then not colored where the butterfly was. That might've been a really cool thing. But I was trying to see if the butterfly would show through that. No. And what I should have done was to put the outline the butterfly and then not put paint maybe in that spot. I don't really know. But I'm going to close this up. And this is a really cool thing. It's difficult to see from afar and on the computer. But on the back of this like shadow box frame, it says follow your dreams. And so if someone were in your bathroom, washing their hands, they might see this really cool handcrafted gift. And so in the spirit of fall and the holidays that are coming up, and if you don't have a holiday coming up, pick one. There's like 53 holidays between now and the end of the year. Just pick one. Pick one that's your fancy. There's some that give gifts. Pick one of those so that you have a reason to go find some coloring sheets and to go find you a dollar's worth of paint and some paint brushes and let your creativity flow. And so that's what I wanted to offer you today is our faux stained glass and a couple of options for how you could craft something of your own as well. So thank um, you for letting me share. Questions? They want to know if you have any other classes or any other patterns. Um, Pat, Google it, Google it. And what I did was free coloring 
pages. You can do free kids coloring pages, free Halloween coloring pages, free Christmas coloring pages, free what, and just find them. And what I did was I just copied the image and pasted it into my little drawing. You could put, paste it into a document of any kind and just shrink it down to the size of your frame. So what you see is two of the same patterns just done at different sizes. This one was eight inches because my frame said it was eight inches. This one, I just guessed that it was about six inches. And so I printed out about five inches or so to make sure that it cleared in the middle of my, um, my little frame. All right, they wanna know how to make the, the paint color darker. So let's play with that just a little bit. I'm gonna take my green. My green is a little bit lighter. So you were asking how much for this little well, which is not a whole lot. Let's see, my green is kind of light. Let's see, kind of a light green, kind of mm -hmm. like a pistachio ice cream. And so this is maybe another, I use just the tip of the paintbrush to mix that first color for my practice. This is about a quarter, maybe a half a teaspoon to about that tablespoon. And let's see if we can get that just a little bit darker. And so that's probably about five shades darker just there. And so you can just kind of play with it till you get the darkness that looks vibrant enough for you. The other thing that you can do, let's see, is you can add layers on. Once it dries, you can go back and add another layer. If it's if it's too light, you know, if it's too lighter than you would like it to be. So that just gave us a little bit darker. Let's see. Let's go a little more. Let's go. I'm, I'm all for the experimentation. Another maybe half a teaspoon. Let's see. That's getting us closer to the half and half ratio. They want to know if they can add black. Yep. Yep. You can add any color you want to. It's your project. Black is nice to do the lines with, and you can just add a little bit of black to some glue. Uh, and like uh, one of those little school size bottles or a little squirt bottle of some kind, yep. save an old ketchup bottle or something. iPhone? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so they missed the start of this. Are you mixing clear glue with paint? You can mix any color or any kind of glue because glue you know, um, dries clear or opaque. Um, I, yeah, clear glue or white glue. I'm using white glue. It'll give it a little more opaque finish. The clear glue usually dries pretty crystal clear. So it's going to be a little more see-through with that. Also, if you missed the beginning of this, we will have this on the Atlantic Institute SC YouTube channel at the end of this coming up week uh, so that you can watch it um, and you can pause and stop and do all of that. Uh, Again, this is like a gel glitter paint and it yeah. came six colors for a dollar twenty-five. And so I could go back over some of these, if I wanted them a little bit darker, if I wanted to add a little bit more um, opaqueness to it. And then of course, if you were using a traditional picture frame, you'd wanna put it somewhere where it can get some light that comes through it. You know, this one's got a little fold up, so it go right on your kitchen counter, your kitchen window seal, or, you know, somewhere that's got light shining, or with this small one, even uh, with the back off of it, I would take the back off of it and that would hang nicely in like um, a kitchen window because the light would go through that. Uh, as a matter of fact, in my kitchen, I took a, a, a real stained glass class and made a butterfly and it's hanging in my kitchen window. It's maybe five inches, um, but it hangs there kind of like a sun catcher. And so this would make a really cool thing for that purposes as well. Any other questions that I can help answer? Do you guys feel like this would be something in your skill set? Could you successfully do this craft? Uh, yes, I most definitely can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So I'm thinking my simple. daughter, we like to make Christmas presents for people, and this would be a fun one for her to get. 
she's very creative and she could do one for her grandpas and grandmas and you know so. i'm a crafter i'm a fiber crafter so i have yarn you could do yarn as part of your trimming for this there's so many ways think about what things you have you know mm -hmm. do you have you could use the same concept with fabric and it would almost look like a, a patchwork quilt um mm -hmm. You can do several kinds of things. The glue gives you the ability to use it like a sun catcher, um, mm -hmm. but you could use scraps of fabric. You mm -hmm. could use all kinds of things. Like napkins have really cool designs on them sometimes. And if they're two layer, you can just separate the layer and get that nice vibrant printed layer that, that this, uh, some of the um, napkins that you can get. There's a number of different ways. Um, you could do that and then print out something or you could print out something to put on the back. So I'm sort of saying this box says, follow your dreams in the back of there. But those are things that you could use this kind of idea and see where your creativity takes you. That's the, the, the wonderful thing about crafts is that yours doesn't have to be just like mine. Go see what kind of stuff you got at your house that sparks some creativity. You like the color, you like the texture, you could put some gemstones glued onto here, you could do all kinds of things. So hopefully this, if you haven't already been thinking, start thinking about what you might want to give that something made by your hands for the holidays. For the cricket hands when you go to the store. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Those gift bags that people give you that you don't want to throw away, but they're really cute with that tissue paper inside that they have, you know, there's four pieces in there and the rest of the packs at their house, you know, waiting for the next opportunity. All of these become things that you can take from. Maybe it's uh, paper plates that you got some left over from a party and it's got really cool flowers on it. You can cut them out and be able to use that. You can play with the parts that are covered and parts that are light, you know, so you can leave spaces intentionally for sun to be able to come through. But these are just some things to spark your creativity. Hopefully we've planted a seed and it would be great to see what that seed grows into. So if you, if, if you take on this craft, like put it on the social media so we know what you did and see where, you, where, this, seed, uh, where this seed grows into. Yep, if you, uh, Atlantic Institute Greenville is our Facebook page. You could pop a picture out there for the cloth for this. Um, also, we do uh, cultural creations once a month. Um, and next month is uh, about making wrapping paper out of tissue paper. Um, the rest of the pack. Yeah. So, um, so sign up for that. You can do that through our Eventbrite. Um, also, we do cuisine of different cultures. Um, our next class for that is next week. Um, and I do not remember which what one that is, but it's also on our uh, Eventbrite. Um, and if you have a teenager that needs a little life skills, we have life skills for teens. And we also just took on other planners throughout the United States. And they have all sorts of other wonderful programs going on this this month. So go ahead and check all those out. Um we, if you subscribe to our Eventbrite channel, when we put out new events, it'll let you know, um, so you can see that. But I do know I have events up till June of next, no, yeah, June of next year or May of next year already on our Eventbrite. So go ahead and look at those and sign up with the new Eventbrite pricing and regulations. Um, you want to sign up sooner rather than later because we are now limited to only 100 signups. So unfortunately. So I want to thank everybody for coming. Thank you, Lorana. This was awesome as always. Um, like I said earlier, she has one on, on finger knitting. And I think we did that. Did we do that in 2022 or 2021? I think it was 2021. We've that done, let's see, we've done finger knitting. We've done... Um salsa we've done holiday winter squash casseroles we've done event break uh, 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 what did we do we did hot chocolate we did hot chocolate and the bologna de verde oh, so yeah. ecuadorian food and hot chocolate i brought chocolate from ecuador, ecuador. Yeah. i've been practicing with real cacao on making really good hot chocolate Ooh. so yeah, yeah, we've done some really cool things together, Paula. We have, Laura. So, yeah, so um, all our events are advertised on an event, right? We have a Facebook page. We also have a website. Um, 
but we have the YouTube channel that has over 200 videos um, on it. And there's the cultural creations, there's cuisine of different cultures. We have educational and interfaith. Please go check us out and like our, our YouTube channel because it'll also let you know when we put new stuff on it. Like our Eventbrite, um, subscribe to our Eventbrite page. Um, and you can just do that by when you find one of our events, you just go down and say you want to you wanna follow that person and it'll let you know when we have new stuff coming up. Um, and we look forward to seeing you again. And please invite your friends. We would love to see, like I said, I'm trying for all, all 50 states and over 40 countries. So please help us out here. And if we don't have any more questions, I'm going to end this, the recording now. I say you're welcome to everyone. I see the comments in the, in the chat box. Great to craft with you guys today. Show me what you guys make. I want to see what you guys, uh, what you guys uh, let your creativity create.